kid, gonna show you something very, it's kind of scary and very interesting too. This uh, little kid, Ben the Baptist, he uh, wants a Christian theocracy. He wants, he basically says that the uh, the, the government should be based around the Bible and that the, the, there should be no church-state separation. And he brings up this thing of, oh, what happens if the government basically infringes on your, your with, with the ban of the Bible? That's actually the point of, of church-state separation. The, the point of, of church-state separation is actually to protect religious freedom and to protect the right to believe because the state can't, can't, infr can't, uh, uh, infringe on the religious freedom that's why there's a separation of church and state that's why the i mean the the, the religious right the and most most of the religious right people they're roman catholics they're yoking up with roman catholics you know not going to get into that but uh the the religious the religious right is totally controlled by roman catholicism totally controlled by the uh the jesuits because uh, it, and if there are any true bible believing christians they ought to they ought to get out of the religious right because uh uh, you should not yoke up with Roman Catholics, with Mormons, with Jehovah's Witnesses, just because you can agree that, okay, abortion's bad, you know, sodomite marriage is bad. No, I'm not going to unite with Roman Catholics and unite with um, for, uh, Mormons just because we just because we, we see eye to eye on, or, or we can agree that homosexuality is bad and all this other stuff. Again, um, they want a church or state religion. That's what the religious right wants. This, that's what this goon wants, a state religion. And he goes back to the Old Testament. To uh, back that up, and he doesn't realize again he's non-dispensational. He thinks the whole Bible is for Christians today. He doesn't realize that America is not is not Israel under a, uh, a king. Okay, um, that's not the case in America. Okay, and again the point of church-state separation is actually to protect your religious freedom, to, so that the state can't infringe on on religion. There's a wall there between the two. And you know he rejects that, and just showing his, his Catholic papal leanings, he wants a dark ages type of Roman Catholic uh, theocracy. So let's get right into this. Hey everybody, brother Ben here. I want to talk about in this video that if you're a Christian, you should want a Christian theocracy. I mean, there I said it, and I know that doesn't seem very controversial to people who usually watch my videos or know about the new IFB, but you'd be surprised how many Christians out there, so-called, would disagree with that and say, well, you know, separation of church and state, which is a leftist talking point. It's actually a biblical talking point. Uh, render unto Caesars, Caesars which are Caesars, and render unto God which are God's. It's a biblical talking point. This, that, that, you know, you obey the government, you just you pay your taxes, you obey the government, and you also obey God. There's a separation there. You don't mix the two together, you know. That's nothing more than just Roman Catholicism. It's nothing more than, than um, oh, you know, like an Islamic caliphate or something like that. And you mix in the state and the church together. It's not biblical at all. It's not taught and not taught anywhere in the New Testament. I saw this meme that was being passed around on social media, and there were Christians, so-called, in the comment section agreeing with it. The meme said that we're a secular nation, and so therefore, no Christians have the right. To oppose gay marriage because it's not a Christian nation anyway, and so you can't oppose laws that contradict the Bible. And there no, were people who claim. No, I agree with him. Obviously, I, me, I mean, I'll come out and say I, I'm against sodomite marriage. But what his, what his solution to it is is he wants a, uh, a a Roman Catholic Islamic type of of theocracy, which is not biblical. Okay, that, that's what he's doing. He has this this um, this false alternative. Either you're you're with these people who are, are saying, oh, we can't oppose sodomite marriage, or you want a theocracy. No, I'm not for either one, okay? I believe in the separation of church and state. However, I'm also against sodomite marriage. You know, you, you can be for the two. You can be for both stances. In the name of Christ, in the comment section, going, yeah, I agree. It just shows you how watered down and lame most people are who claim the name of Christ today, unfortunately, it's a product of being in the falling away. And for the record, I am for gay marriages. And I'm for gay weddings. Because the word gay, according to the Bible, means happy. So I want every marriage to be happy and every wedding to be happy. I oppose sodomite marriages, sodomite weddings. And go even further than that, that's actually a milk toast position. The Bible prescribes what should be done the sodomite reprobates, but that's a different topic for a different time. So apparently, we're, we're, we're Israelites, we're Jews under the law. Apparently, again, this is the this is the mentality of non dispensationalists. We should be putting sodomites and adulterers to death, because of, because of Leviticus twenty thirteen and Leviticus uh, I think it's twenty verse ten. 
Uh, those are for the Israel under the theocracy. Now, obviously, those those things are still sinful. I'm, I'm not saying that they're 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 no longer sin. They're still sinful. I'm not I'm not for those things. They're, they're adultery and sodomite marriage. They're still sinful. But we're not enforcing the death penalty against that. It's not we're not Israel under our, under a, under a theocracy, you know. But he thinks we are because we're because it's non dispensational. The whole Bible's for us today. So, you know, if you think the whole Bible's for us today, then what's wrong with the Christian theocracy then? Because it happened in the Old Testament, so we we should have it today. Never mind the fact that that the Bible clearly teaches separation of church and state. I'm going to show you the verses that prove that after this, by the way. Here's my point. If you're a Christian, you should want God back in government. You should want our government to revolve around the Bible. And if that means replacing the Constitution with the King James Bible... Uh, chapter and verse, please. The government should revolve around the Bible. Uh, chapter and verse. That was true under, under Old Testament Israel, but we're not Old Testament Israel. That's fine. I'm cool with it. Because think about it, all these compromisers out there, oh, secular government can't do anything about it. Gay marriage, that's fine, can't do anything about it, secularization. Here's the problem with that. What are you going to do then when they eventually and inevitably institute a law that says it's illegal for you to even own a Bible? It's illegal. Oh, that's the point of church-state separation, to protect your religious freedom. The state is separate from, from religion. There's a wall between the two. That's actually the point of of, of church state separation, you know. Very weak, arg very weak argument that he's using. Go for you to go soul winning. You're just gonna be a doormat at that point. The Bible says it's a, it's better to obey God rather than men. So it doesn't matter what law is enacted by our wicked government. We as Christians should always abide by the Bible. And guess what? God is against religious pluralism. Okay. Now, I, would, I would agree with that to an extent. God definitely knows the truth about these religions like Islam or Hinduism. Yeah, they're satanic, they're satanic and, and they're they're not they're not salvation. They're they're a false counterfeit. Uh, they're, they're not. I'll put it this way: they're not biblical salvation. Um, so I would agree with that. You know, Jesus is the only way to heaven, but we don't need a theocracy. See, see what he's saying? He's setting up the straw man. So we God is is against you know false religion. Okay, yeah, that's true. Amen. But we need a theocracy, basically, to convert people, and and, and you know, or it's it's wrong. I mean, I'll, it's, it's total, totally Roman Catholic. You know, it's a total false dichotomy. Either you have you have religious freedom, or you have a theocracy. Oh no, you can have religious freedom. We don't need a theocracy. Okay, that's just how it works. And you're not gonna you're not gonna convert people people by having a state enforced religion. It doesn't work that way. He's against ecumenicalism. I know that's not popular in America today. We're supposed to be tolerant of all these religions. Well, I'm not tolerant of Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses and Islam and all the other false religions out there. Today, so your, your option is to basically deny them their liberty of conscience and to basically have, like, force uh, theocracy, uh, have, a, have a state of theocracy. Um, where is this taught in Scripture? Where, where is it? Where is this in the Bible? I mean, yeah, the Old Testament. Where is this taught in the New Testament? It's not there. Render unto Caesars which are Caesars, and render unto God which are God's. That simple. It doesn't get any simpler than that. Is, um, all of it. I'm not tolerant of them, because they're wicked, false, devil religions that are sending people to hell. If you're a Christian, why would you be tolerant of these religions? I'm not saying hate the people who... Yeah, that's why you preach to them. You don't have to enforce a state-enforced religion. You preach to them. You give them the gospel. That's how you That's how you, That's how how you. you uh, deal with them. You don't enforce religion down there. You don't You don't enforce, or put it this way, you don't enforce, have a state-enforced religion and ban the other ones. That's not how you do it. That's, that's, not, that's not biblical. That's not evangelism, first of all. Guiled by false religions, you should love them and want to get them saved. You should hate the deceivers but not the deceived you should love those people and again you want to get them saved but here's my point god's not for religious pluralism god wants a theocracy and he's going to get god wants a theocracy um chapter and verse please and he brings up the millennial kingdom we're not in the millennial kingdom like, what's his, what's his argument we're not in the millennial kingdom a theocracy during the millennium when jesus christ rules and reigns on this earth literally with a rod of iron. Are we in the millennium right now? And, and of course, there's, there's not going to be a theocracy in that time period because there will not be a single Muslim, a single atheist in the, in the millennial kingdom because Jesus is there physically ruling. 
so there won't be any, any even any, any need for a theocracy because i mean how, i mean again uh, you know, obviously, faith is the evidence of things not seen. But how can you have faith if Jesus Christ is there physically ruling on the earth, and you're and you, and He's there physically ruling? No oh, motorcycle. He's there's a motorcycle outside, but He's there physically ruling. So how can you have faith? He, you could see Him right there. So there will not be a single Hindu or Buddhist or atheist in the Millennial Kingdom. Again, very very weak argument. Iron. Now look, I don't think that America is ever going to fully turn back to God. I just don't think it's ever going to happen. I don't think we'll ever live in a country where our laws actually abide by what the Bible says. It's just not going to happen. The only time we'll see that come to pass is during the millennium. So I'm not advocating for you to go out and be some political activist to go and change the laws and everything like that. It's a waste of your time. But what we should at the very least agree on is that God would want it that way. If it's possible. So like, God would want it that way. Um, chapter and verse, please. He, and it goes back to the Old Testament, which again, context, dispensational context. It's for Israel under under a under a theocracy. We're not Israel. We're not. We are not uh, biblical Israel. You know, ridiculous. What happened before the millennium? In Second Kings eighteen, just a, an example of this. Talking about Hezekiah, it says, "Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah." The son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to raid. Now, Ahaz was a wicked king. Hezekiah, conversely, he's a good king. He's righteous. And the Bible explains why. Verse number two, 20 and five years old is he when he began to reign, and he reigned 20 and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. So he was a righteous king. Well, why? Verse four, he removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For under those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. So Hezekiah was a righteous king, and this is just one example. And, and what's the dispensational context? It's for Israel under, under a theocracy. We are not Israel. America is not Israel under a king. Total, total Roman Catholic type of mentality right here. We want to have a Dark Ages type of theocracy. Yeah, Roman Catholic. Example. All the other kings, you could say the same thing about them too. But Hezekiah was a righteous king because he broke down the satanic idols and he removed false religion out of the land. So if we were to ever get a political leader, which this will never happen, but just hypothetically, if it did happen, that said, guess what? American government is now going to follow the Bible, the King James Bible, to a T. And he removes false religion out of the out of the land and removes the idols, the satanic idols, out of the land. Christians should like that. Christians should support that. Where is it taught in the New Testament? Where, where is banning other religions? Where is that taught in the New Testament? It's not there. What, again, what he wants is a Roman Catholic type of dark ages of theocracy. This is nothing. This is again. This is nothing more than Roman Catholic. This is nothing more than, than the, uh, the the Inquisition. Nothing. No different. Christians should want that to come to pass, but there are so many watered down, lame, sissified, so called Christians out there who wouldn't want to see that happen. It's yeah, amazing. Cause, yeah, because it's not biblical. Okay, let me show you some verses to prove that this little this little kid won't show you. Let me show you this. Just go in your your King James Bible and just search up the word render, and just see what, and go through the Gospels. You're gonna see this thing of of uh, rendering unto Caesars, which are Caesars. Matthew and and through uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke all have this. Matthew chapter 22 verse 21. They say unto him, Caesars, and then he saith unto them, Render therefore unto Caesars, Caesar which are Caesars, and unto God that things which are God's. So you're you're you know doing your duty to the government, you're paying your taxes, all this other stuff, then you're doing your duty to God. The separation there. Mark chapter twelve, verse seventeen. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesars the things that are the things that are Caesars, and to God the things that are God's, and they marveled at him. They marveled. They were, you know, they were shocked at hearing that. Luke chapter 20, verse 25. Then he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesars the things which be Caesars, and unto God the things which be God's. 
all the three of the gospels have those things you render unto unto caesar which is caesar's you, you do your duty to the government and you also do your duty to god the separation there there is no such thing as a christian theocracy in the new testament ridiculous so don't don't be deceived by this roman catholic type of mentality of oh you have we need a theocracy where is it it's not taught anywhere it's not taught anywhere in the new, new testament we're not israel under a, under a king it's not how it works you know and, and by the way, he's going to get a theocracy because in, when the Antichrist rules and reigns, it's going to be radical pre-Vatican II Roman Catholicism back in power. So he's going to, he's going to get the theocracy he wants, but it's not going to you know, obviously end well for him. So yeah, don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye. Thank you.